Welcome, welcome, welcome to my Facebook Live today at noon. It's been a while since I've done a Facebook Live. I am Tomasa Makapinlak, and I am going with the brand of the Blended Shaman today. Um, it's funny, the old me is dying. A lot of things, a lot of transformation and things are going on. And it's a wonderful time for that this time of year as we are just moving out of Scorpio. And, but we really aren't really moving out of Scorpio. You know, Scorpio is all about the shadows and transformation and death. And, you know, let's bring out all the covert shit. And so, um, and it's quite appropriate because I have a lot of Plutonian energy in my chart. And so, um, but the interesting thing is that, you know, as we get on with these days, this day today, uh, we have a lot of things going on with us that um, we want to stay in high vibration during this time of the year. And sometimes it can be difficult, especially when we get around friends and family. And we all get together and things happen. I know that I have experienced that myself, um, being around friends and family this time of year. And they can trigger us like nobody's business. And so the thing is, what do you do to stay in the flow and so that you know, no one can trigger you and you stay in that high vibration. So I'm going to share with you my three secrets today to staying in high vibration. So I see a lot of people are watching. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Angela. And welcome, welcome, welcome. And I saw that Jay Scott Neal had joined earlier. So welcome. Hi. Happy Thanksgiving. Jay, love you too. And you're going to love my first secret, by the way, Jay, because it is all with the foundation of spiritual mind treatments, you know, Spiritual mind treatments is my first secret. And so many of you might wonder, what are spiritual mind treatments? And it is, you know, what most of us call affirmative prayer. And it's all about affirming what already is the truth. Um, you know, every morning I get on the phone at 8 o'clock in the morning with one of my very good friends um, who lives there in the Bay Area, as I'm in Los Angeles now. And... Um, we do spiritual mind treatments every morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. We go, okay, what is it that you want for today? So it's all about how you start out your day, and I start my day out with spiritual mind treatments. Many people pray, and that's what spiritual mind treatments are, but it's already affirming what you already are. Um, you know, we don't need to pray and beg and ask for things. The truth is that it's already there, and you might hear Abraham Hicks says, everything is already in the vortex, and yes, it is. It's a matter of you matching the vibration of what it is that you want to create in your life. So I get on the phone with my good friend, Edith, and I say, Edith, what is it you want this morning? What do we want to create? And so we've been doing this thing of spiritual mind treatments. You know, I went for so long with my, work, with my life not working the way I wanted, to do, wanted it to work out. And so every morning I decided to get up in the morning and do spiritual mind treatments. And what does that mean by spiritual mind treatments? We affirm that there is a universe, a God, or whatever you want to call it, spirit. And then we also recognize that we are one with spirit. And we declare what we want for that day. And what I begin to do with my spiritual mind treatment is not necessarily declare what I want, but declare the vibration, the energy of what I need to be to create what it is that I want in my life. And then I give thanks for for knowing the truth, for seeing the truth, for being the truth, for being in the flow of the truth. And then I release it and let it be so. And that is what a spiritual mind treatment is about. It's not about, oh God, I get on my knees and I pray and I want this and want this. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's what I learned early in my years in my life because I grew up with Catholicism and that's what I learned. That's what I remember for Catholicism. But when I learned spiritual mind treatments, I begin to set the vibration of my day every day and uh, affirm what already is so because everything is right here at our fingertips we just need to know that and so what it does is it you know when you do this on a daily basis it actually keeps you in a high vibration and so anything that comes your way you remember who you truly are and that you are one with God one with the universe one with spirit and you're just an expression and that God has your back you know that and so when you come from that place of knowing and you said it so much and you affirm it, it's like every cell in your body responds to that. And so I noticed that, you know, I find a parking space really easy. Traffic isn't so bad. 
you know, um, the little things, just, I don't even need to sweat it. And then when people come at me with their stuff, it's like, hmm, wait a minute, is that me or is that them? And what is this really all about? Um, and I'll get into a little bit about um, that in a minute. So, so that's one of the things I do. Another, the second secret that I do is I spend a lot of time in nature. Um, I'm a very open person, very empathic. And so one of the things that is very important to me is that I need to connect in with spirit. You know, I might say spiritual mind treatments, but I also need to feel spirit on some level. And so part of that is spending time in nature. And when I do go hiking, I barefoot hike. So I have my barefoot touching into Mother Earth, and I'm feeling Mother Earth, and I'm communing with the sun. Sometimes I must, the time my sun gaze if the sun is out, and I connect and I hear the spirit, I hear the birds, I hear the animals out there. And so those are the things that I do. I spend time in nature. And one of the, thing, one of the reasons why I do that is because it is a reminder that I am one with nature. And so these are just some of the things I do. And so you got to find for you what is it that you like to do that connects you in with spirit. And so those are one of the ways I do it. Um, and I find when I do that that I have a state change in my life like because my life can be full of like business, business, business. I interact with a lot of people um, and there's a lot of things, you know, that can come my way. I've even had people come at me with their stuff and it's like, whoa, what is this about? Where's this coming from? You know, and so you always want to have that open heart. And to, in order to have that open heart, you got to remember where you come from and who you are and what you're an expression of. And so that's why spiritual mind treatments and being in nature are very important to me. So... And the third thing I want to talk about is, um, this is very key, and this is something I teach in my workshops. So this is really about um, mastering the five pillars, the five foundational pillars of self-care that will help you on a physical, mental, emotional, and soulful level. And so I talk about this in my workshop, Activate Your Mastery. And what we do is we go way, way in depth with it. And so what are these five, you know, foundational pillars of self-care? And so um, one of them is, you know, what I think about is very important. So I'm very, um, very conscious about what I think about and, and what I say. So words create things. So thoughts are things, first of all. I come from this foundation of the metaphysical world and the transcendentalist period where we look at Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson and Walt Whitman, all those guys, and look at what they were doing back in those times because it's all about the new thought. I'm a new thought person. I'm a new thought leader. I'm actually declaring that I'm a new thought leader. And so the thing about it is um, when you come into this place of declaring what it is that you want and stating it and living it and make sure every word and every part of your being is in that, then you can create for yourself, for your life, what you want. So that's why I start with spiritual mind treatments because they put me in that mood of, mm, in that vibration of creating what I want my day to look like. So, um, you know, thoughts are things. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, thoughts are things. Man is what he thinks about all day long. And so what you think about is what you create in your life. It always starts with what you think about. And that's very, very important. Um, you know, um, it's so funny because I, I've been thinking about how I want it to land where I'm coming from here. You know, I know that as I leave the Bay Area, I no longer want it to be doing so much one-on-one -on -one work with people, hands-on work with people. I mean, not that I'm giving that up totally. I still have it in my practice. I teach people how to do it for themselves. But I also wanted to start working with people one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I've been told that I'm supposed to serve the collective. That's what my whole human design chart is supposed to be about. So part of me is like, okay, spirit, then if I am to, to serve the collective, then you need to give me a, 
an avenue, a way to do it because I've been doing one on one and this is not helping the world. It is helping the world, but it's helping it very slowly. So part of it has been, okay, it's time for you to, to uh, activate people's mastery and help them be who they're here to be. And so I'm unearthing the way people are supposed to be here in this world. So my work just helps them to unearth who they're here to be. It's a bigger purposeful work. It's not so much a, I'm going to help you with your health issues because helping your health issues is just about helping your health issues. So the purpose is bigger than that. It's like, mm, let's stand here who we are supposed to be in every fiber of our being. And so that means having health, having um, relationships at work, and having financial abundance, and doing work that you actually love, that feels very purposeful to you. And so that's what this work is really all about. It's taking it to the next level. So, you know, these five foundational pillars of self-care is, is really about what do you think about? Because when you think about things, you create your life. And so that's why I started out with spiritual mind treatments. And so, you know, I had this quest of, you know, it's time for me to move on to my next evolution of a healer. And so the, the bigger picture of being a healer is to helping other people stand into what they're here to be, what they're here to do, and remember who they really are, tap into that. And so, you know, because I've thought of that, it's like, oh, all of a sudden this is all coming to fruition. Whoa, you know, activate your mastery. It came out. And uh, the last workshop I did a few weeks ago was amazing, and I got feedback. I got really good feedback that they booked me at a, a yoga studio. And then someone asked me when I was bringing it to the Bay Area, and so here I am, bringing it to the Bay Area on December 2nd. So I, I, wanted, I don't want to just sit here and talk about my stuff, but I want to talk about the, the five foundational pillars of self-care. So the second one is food is medicine. So think about food. You know, um, we're getting ready to have a big feast tomorrow for those of you who live in the United States and actually celebrate what we call Thanksgiving. You know, um, it's funny, I'm doing Thanksgiving different this year. I mean, yes, my family, you know, we all gather together to eat. I don't need to put everything on my plate anymore. And that's the truth. And so um, I noticed that food is, I love food, by the way. I'm a foodie. But I'm also getting really funny about what I put in my body. Um, and when I put it in my body, I've noticed that. I seem to be on this... Um, I do this intermittent fast every day where I don't eat until about 10 or 11 o'clock during the day. And then I, I, I start eating at that time and then I, I can eat anything I want during the day up until about 8 o'clock at night. And then after 8 o'clock, everything is done. So uh, what I've noticed is that I'm not eating anything differently. Maybe I'm adding more turmeric into my diet. Um, but my body has shifted. It has changed. And so I'm not necessarily shedding weight. I'm shedding inches. I still weigh the same. So people tell me muscle weighs more than fat. Yes, it does. But you know, what's happened is the proportions have changed of me. And um, I'm a lot more, you know, have the waistline, but I've gone down a size. So it's very interesting to, to see that because I was like, what's right in the middle of, of Facebook Live? <laughs> I'll have to get in touch. I'll have to call her back afterwards. But anyway, um, so food is medicine. This is my sister who's having hosting Thanksgiving tomorrow, by the way. So I'm bringing in stream beans, and I've decided I'm going to cook them in the healthiest way. I don't care what the rest of the family thinks. I'm going to give them something healthy. I'm going to give them what I'm going to give myself. Food is medicine. So what are you serving yourself? What are you putting in your body? Because food is medicine. And so I'm constantly giving my body medicine and good medicine. And so, you know, and I encourage my clients to do that. So most of the people I hang out with are pretty holistic. We want good, clean food that is going to nourish us and to, um, you know, bring out the best in me. Uh, you know, I notice that I don't have health conditions. Health issues happen when I eat good, clean food. So anyway, um, so those are the things you want to do. Why do you want to eat good, clean food? Because you want to stay healthy. You want to live a long time. You want to live out your, your lifetime so that you live healthy, a quality life. And you don't have to worry about the aches and pains in your body. And you don't have to worry about, oh, am I going to get the big C or do I 
I get it and what do I do when I do get it or whatever. And you don't change once you get it. You do it before you, you get it or if you ever, you know, whatever. You don't even think about even getting it, by the way. So that's rule back to the first foundational pillar for self-care. Um, the third one I want to move on to is, is we, we, don't, we, we um, don't rock with the toxins. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what that really means is that every product that you use, whether that be um, personal care products, we're going to ignore that phone. That's my sister's phone ringing here in her house, her house phone. Yes, we still have landlines. And I actually love landlines for that reason. They don't disconnect you like cell phones. (coughs) And they're not as toxin as the cell phones, you know, the radiation getting off from the cell phones. So here's the thing is... um, (coughs) um, you want to use products, skincare products, makeup, personal care products that do not have toxins in them. And so what I mean by toxins, you want to make sure they're paraben free. You want to make sure they don't have sodium little, little, sodium little sulfate. Um, and those are just a few of the things that you want to look at. So you might want to consider looking at other things as well. I'm looking at this because it's very interesting. The sun shines in here and I had it on here and then Once I put my hand up to near the camera, more light comes through. So anyway, getting back to this. Um, So the thing about it, I'm going to share with you. Actually, I've watched my sister since I've been staying with her, what's happened to her. And I've actually gotten her to change uh, some of the personal care products used around here, such as the dishwashing soap and the dishwashing dishwashing liquid, the the stuff that we use in the dishwasher. And uh, hi, Melinda, Nadine and Melinda listening from London. Hello, how are you doing, dear one, Melinda? Um, And so, um, but also, you know, really using products that are not um, going to disrupt your endocrine system. And that's what a lot of toxins do. They disrupt your endocrine system. And they will create a lot of inflammation in the body. So I've watched my sister come down in her weight and lose, shed the pounds, and then also, um, you know, just really, she looks fabulous. She does not look like she's 69 years old, by the way. She looks like she's my age, 50-something. So um, when you when you actually live that way, uh, you stop rocking without those toxins, your body changes, and you're more healthy. But also, um, I think what's very key is the hormones, because hormones can drive your emotions. And so then um, you don't have all the emotions that you would necessarily have. Hi, Jackie. How are you doing? So very key piece is stop rocking around those damn toxins. So do not use palm olive liquid soap. You need to use something like Ecos or find it. You know, all the grocery stores have it now. I mean, seriously, I went into Rouse the other day. I haven't been in the Rouse probably since I was a little girl. And even they had, you know, non-toxic stuff there. I was like, amazed. So, because I normally shop at Air One and Whole Foods. If you're in L.A., you know what Air One is. Uh, Whole Foods or uh, Sprouts or, you know, things like that. I even went inside of a Smart and Final recently, uh, and they had alkaline water. They actually had uh, non-toxic soaps, you know, the... The more environmental friendly stuff. You know, here's the thing. We might think that, oh, we do it for the environment. So we do it for our personal environment and we do it for the environment, for the world, for the Mother Earth, Pachamama. You know, stop using all that toxic crap. And you might think it costs more. It's going to cost you more to take care of your health than it is going to cost you to take care of, um, you know, to, to buy that soap, that kind of soap. So, um... So in the long run, it's going to save you your health, and that's the truth. So um, what's more important to you is my question. Um, so, you know, one of the things I said about rocking with the toxins is a lot of us paint. So it's funny because I was just talking to a client yesterday who paints her house and um, who's painting her house in Colorado. She just moved to Colorado like a year ago. She bought a house recently, and she's like, I'm, I'm painting it for Airbnb, and I said, great, and... Um, Here's the thing is if you're painting, use no VOC paint. And so that means no volatile organic compounds in your, in your paint. Here's the deal is that means you don't have all these toxins in the paint. So when you walk in a room, you paint it. If you're painting a room or you're painting your house, you smell the toxins. 
toxic fumes and it really does affect your lungs. I know I used to feel it whenever I would paint. And so it's really funny because I painted a, a house or excuse me, a, a treatment room. You know, I was a holistic practitioner. I, tr I painted a treatment room, a new treatment room that I was moving to back in 2010, 2011. And um, I had my nephew, um, excuse me, something is coming on my screen here. Got to love all the notifications you get. Storage is almost full. Okay, what does that mean? I'm not recording. I'm going to download here. So it's just going to go on Facebook. Anyway, um, I have painted a treatment room. So I had my nephew-in-law come and help me because he's a contractor. So I did the first coat. And I said, can you do the other coats? Because I was probably prepping for us to go to Tahoe at the time. I remember back in those days. And so he went and he actually painted the room for me. He finished painting. He's like, Tomas, you don't need to spend all that money to, you know, have uh, or this extra, you know, this more expensive type of paint. And I said, no, you don't understand. I help people with their health and there's no freaking way that I'm going to be putting toxins, have them breathing toxic fumes as I'm working on them. So he went and he painted and he's a smoker, by the way. And he painted and he said to me, wow, Tomasa, you know what? I have to tell you that uh, usually I am knocked out by the fumes from painting and it's been really easy to paint. I'm not tired and you know what? And there were no fumes and actually it was easy. And so what I'm telling you is to go do this for yourself. If you're going to paint a room, use no VOC paint. Really key piece here. You don't want those toxic fumes. You don't want to be breathing them. I don't care if you're going to open up the door or not. You know, you don't want to be breathing. It's like lead and paint. You know, that's what they discovered many years ago. So you don't want to even have VOC in your paint. And that's the truth. So there you go. Um, you know, hardwood floors over carpets any day. And, and we have to be careful how the hardwood floors are treated. So those types of things. Just your environment. You want to create a healthy environment for yourself. You know, when you create this healthy environment for yourself, think about it. Are you as irritable as you are when you, when you deal with people? You know, you want to keep your life as clean as possible. So these are the things I teach. And then um, the fourth one, the fourth pillar, the foundation, a pillar for, you know, self-care is, um, is you want to be wise with your exercise. And so many people go, well, why I exercise some I'll say, I do that, you know. The question is, do you enjoy your exercise is what I ask you. You know, one of the things I really um, pride myself on and, and I encourage all my clients to go do exercise that you're going to stick with. Not because you got this goal to lose weight. Not because, you know, you want to just be healthy. You think that it's going to help you with your health. But go do exercise that you're actually going to enjoy. Um, you know, one of the things that I love to do is I love to go hike in nature. So hiking gives me a lot of exercise. And so today when I get off of here and I finish doing some more ministry work, I'm off to Solstice Canyon. I'm going to go do my three hour hike. I'm going to sun gaze. And then I'm probably going to run and do some groceries, a little, pick up a couple of groceries. And I'm going to find a place where it's not so crowded because it is that day. It's like, oh my God, why did I wait to do it? To get a couple other things for Thanksgiving. But anyway, um, you know, I'm going to go hiking. So, and I'm going to get to spend time in nature too. So that was the second thing I said, you know, find someone that something that connects you with spirit. The other thing is, you know, exercise, it's great when it connects you with spirit. So, you know, the little girl inside me loves to dance. So I go and take dance classes when I'm not hiking in nature and I need to get exercise. The other way I do it is I go and I, um, I get, I, I dance, I go to dance class. And so dance class for me is, does it for my inner child. So my inner child's soul gets, gets, uh, gets, uh, fulfilled, you know, she loves it. So, uh, it brings out the best to me when I go to dance class and so I'm twirling around or I'm, you know, taking turns or stretching or, you know, whatever it is I do, I prance around. So my inner child just loves it. It's like it, it feeds my spirit. So I asked you, what feeds your spirit when you exercise? And whatever that is, go do it. For some people, it's yoga. It's so funny. I hadn't done yoga in a long time, at least in a group setting. I went to a yoga class a week from this last Sunday. And it was like the best thing ever because it just brings out that breath work. So I'm stretching and they were doing some abdominals at the end and like I felt it the next day. But it was lovely because it was bringing out the breath, you know, and really like stretching into it. And we were actually doing it to 
a, uh, a playlist, um, you know, more of a updated playlist here. So it's yoga for the playlist It's in West Los Angeles or West Hollywood. If you want to go check it out, I think it's called yoga playlist or something like that. It's on La Cienega Boulevard. If you're one of my LAs, I don't know. I said LAs. interesting anyway. Um, so go check it out. It's a really great. And the last thing is you got to have synergy with your energy. And so this is something I teach in my book, 30 Days to a Vibrant, Healthy, Younger You. All these other things are in there. But I take it in more depth in my workshop, Activate Your Mastery, um, because I do teach people how to work on themselves, but I take energy to a whole nother level. And um, you probably can think that, you know, thoughts are things. They all are um, connected. But what's even bigger is how energetically we all connect. And I demonstrate that in my workshop, Activate Your Mastery. But here's the deal. Energy trumps everything. I believe and I know and I have experienced energy is everything. Um, You know, if you're in a bad mood, that's energy. If you're in a wonderful mood, that is energy. If you're not feeling well, that is energy. And what kind of energy is it is the question. And so I I question, I ask you, what kind of energy do you want to have? You know, when you're dealing with family, they might come at you with energy because that's what they are. It is energy. They are spewing their things to you, whether that be beautiful words or whether that be venom being spit at you. Um, And so you have to be able to decipher and not take on the venom and respect receive the beautiful words. So receive beautiful words and repel the venom. And it's not necessarily that you cut them out, but you still love them, even though they're spitting venom at you. And and so it's been a journey to learn to do that. And I share that in the workshop. And because of my shamanic background and training, uh, it is something that I embrace doing, I love to do. And I feel like it is the work that heals the world on such a deep level. Um, because, you know, it's not about escaping people. It's really about, oh, what are they showing me the mirror of myself if I'm triggered? What is it I'm to learn here? Or, hmm, how can I love them through all of this venom or through all of this darkness or shadows? Um, a lot of things come out this time of the year because people are feeling alone, And so a lot of things that happen in our earlier years in our lives, or even maybe from not this lifetime, um, it comes out and it shows up and we, and and next thing you know, we don't know what happened, what, what, where is this coming from? And so, you know, I, and then the key is to not take it personally. And if you take it personally, then part of it is like, how can I, how can I move through this and still love them? And this is how we create peace right here on earth. So, but this is also how we stay in this high vibration peace. And so that's what I share with people when they activate your mastery. Because listen up, you know, on the road to our mastery, we experience all kinds of things. And especially if you're a healer, if you're an artistic type, we resist what we are supposed to be here to do in a big, big way. We can go that way. And so we might hold off. And resisting and then we might go okay I'm ready to step into it and sometimes stepping into it is about really staying in that vibration that you need to stay in and I teach you how to stay in that vibration activate your mastery and so um, I have three even three times it's coming up and three different places December 2nd in the Bay Area I'm doing in the day in Pleasant Hill California at the uh, the Center for Conscious Living I think that's what it's called I've taught there before. Um, and December 3rd, I'm doing at a yoga studio called Yoga Remedies Wellness, Essential Wellness. I've oh, got it's a long word. It's a long uh, title. Uh, and it's in Harbor City, California. Um, the people in Santa Monica loved it so much that they were like, come teach at our yoga studio, please. And so I'm like, okay, fine. So they booked me at the yoga studio on December 3rd. So I'm teaching it there. Um, and then... Um, my good friend, my shaman friend, Holly, has asked me to come and, and, and do this in her hometown in Portland, Oregon now, which is her home now. Um, and so I'm doing it at a bookstore called um, New Renaissance Bookshop. And it's actually divided into two parts there. 
Um, these workshops that I'm doing in the, the Bay Area and in Los Angeles are full day workshops. They're pretty much, you know, they go from the morning to the evening. So you'd want to um, tuck away some time for yourself. You deserve it. And the world deserves it, deserves you to be in high vibration. And you deserve to be in high vibration. But also learn how you can activate your mastery. And mastery is all about, you know, sitting in this high vibration and creating what it is that you want in your life and stepping into your purposeful life. So, um, and when you can do that, you can have relationships that aren't so much about conflicts and things of that sort. So anyway, thank you for joining me. And I, if you are in the United States of America and you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. And, um, if you have any questions about what I'm doing and what you're up to or any questions, period, I'm always happy to help people out. It's so funny. I was on Facebook the other day and uh, I went to my box and I just went to go question these people about what they were up to, just checking in with people. And one of them said, Tommaso, I'm actually in an emergency room. I'm like, what's going on? And they're just like, um, I'm having chest pains. So I, you know, I think the person thought, he was having a heart attack. And I said, Oh no, 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 no. And so part of me is like, okay, we'll do this, you know, hold this finger on yourself. So I gave them that to do on themselves and, um, voila, no, the doctors can find anything going. It's probably a panic attack, but he held his baby finger and he said he felt better. So that was a wonderful thing. So I never know what I'm getting. You know, I, I just do these things, ask randomly things for people and it's like spirit telling me go check on this person popcorn and then I checked in with another person just on Facebook the other day same time and I was like hey girl I haven't heard from you in a while how are you doing and it's like oh I was supposed to get on a plane and come to California and she lives in Florida and she goes but I, I have I, I haven't been sick in many years and this is what's going on with me and I just kind of went oh you know she had um, an upper respiratory uh, infection and she goes, I haven't been on antibiotics in many years. And, you know, Tomas is like, no to antibiotics. So I'm like, okay, go to the store and buy yourself some licorice root tea. And so she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, they'll help, you know, clear your lung congestion. You don't have high blood pressure, do you? No, no. So go get yourself some licorice root tea. Great. Thank you. So, you know, so ask me anything. I know a lot, especially when it comes to the body. Um, but I also know a lot about things energetically because I have that Chinese medicine background and I have a, a shamanic background of the Inca tradition and I've been doing this work for over 20 years. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see a lot of new faces here watching me and, uh, thank you for coming on board and, um, uh, hope you all have a great Thanksgiving and activate your mastery. I'm here for you. Namaste. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the day. And I'm going for a hike, y'all. Bye-bye.